And guys, in this next news story, two men used an explosive device to blow up a stolen BMW in a gang feud. Shakur Watson is 21 and Stephen Curry is 44, both from Liverpool were found guilty of causing an explosion likely to endanger life following an incident in Salford in 2019. Between December the 14th and December the 31st, a series of incidents including shootings, criminal damage caused by an explosive device and an affray occurred in the Salford area. Greater Manchester Police believed that increasing criminality came from increased tensions between two organised crime groups, the A-Team and the Anti-A Team. The court heard the feud resulted in family members being targeted within the communities they lived in. At around 11 o'clock in the night on December the 30th, 2019, an explosion occurred inside a BMW vehicle that was driven to Crowther Avenue. Police found the suspects Watson and Curry delivered an explosive device in a BMW. The device detonated and the vehicle was written off. The suspects fled the scene immediately following the detonation. The BMW was left at the scene and identified as stolen. No one was injured as a result of the explosion. Watson and Curry were later arrested and charged with a number of offences including causing an explosion likely to endanger life. Both men are found guilty at Bolton Crown Court today. Watson received a 13-year and four-month jail sentence for possession of a firearm and ammunition, two offences supplying Class A drugs and using an explosion likely to endanger life which included some outstanding matters based in Merseyside. Whilst Curry was given 11 years in custody for using an explosion likely to endanger life so both are going to serve a minimum of two-thirds for any potential release on licence. Detective Inspector Rebecca McGuigan of Greater Manchester Police Salford's Organised Crime Unit said this is a fantastic result after a long and thorough investigation. It is believed the intent may have been to detonate the explosive device either at the front door or to alert the attention of the occupier to come to the front door before detonating the device within the vehicle. However, an unforeseen event has occurred resulting in the detonation system being triggered and causing the suspects to flee from the vehicle rapidly, leaving behind crucial evidence which was forensically pieced together with other lines of inquiry in partner agencies and police forces in order to identify the suspects involved. Though some work can't always be seen, there's always a lot going on behind the scenes said we will always listen to our community concerns and any information or issues that are fed to us can sometimes hugely assist in ongoing situations. Watson had previously survived an attempt on his life by Rio Jones, having been hit in the wrist by one of six gunshots fired at him by the teenager. Jones chased him through the streets with both riding electric bikes shortly after 5 o'clock on March the 1st, 2022. Jones fired six shots at him at extremely close proximity. Dashcam footage captured the moment he stretched his right arm out and fired six times directly at his enemy. Watson was seen ducking in order to avoid being hit by the shots but was struck in the right forearm. He continued riding for a short distance before knocking on the door of a stranger's house. Meanwhile, another one of Jones's shots passed through a plastic sheeting of a bus stop and hit a 15-year-old girl who was sitting on the other side in the neck. She had been waiting for the bus home from school with a 14-year-old friend that time. The bullet passed through the body before exiting via the chest. The schoolgirl suffered lung damage and three fractured vertebrae as a result, spending 10 days in Older Hay Children's Hospital before being discharged. Jones claimed during the trial that he had previously been subjected to a spate of attacks over several years as a result of falling out in his circle of friends, which followed the murder of one unnamed member in 2017. The group separated into two factions with him on one side and Watson on the other. Jones stated he had been chased on the morning of the shooting and decided to retaliate by finding and pursuing a person from the other gang in order to warn his assailants off. The gunman maintained he had not intended to fire the gun and instead panicked when he brandished the weapon. So a few months back he was unanimously convicted of attempted murder and he was jailed for life with a minimum term of 16 and a half years behind bars. In another news story, two men involved in the sale of drugs and weapons have been jailed for a total of nearly 40 years. Chris Dixon from Gateshead and Elliot Hopewell from Sheffield were identified by police following an operation in 2020 which saw law enforcement gain access to encrypted devices as part of a push to tackle serious and organised crime. Officers uncovered around 6,000 messages 
from Dixon's phone which boasted cells of spice, amphetamine and a range of weapons including a hand grenade and a Uzi submachine gun. Messages also documented how Hopewell assisted Dixon with the sale of a Colt special revolver for £7,500 to a third party who openly disclosed needing the item for criminal acts. Further messages highlighted how Hopewell sold Dixon 20 kilos of spice with the aim of being distributed in prisons for maximum profit. Dixon was also found to be running an amphetamine factory from a flat in Benwell in Newcastle. Part of the investigation, detectives monitored Dixon's movements across Newcastle and further afield to Weatherby and Merseyside. When officers executed a warrant at his home on June the 15th, he told him, I've been waiting for you before he was arrested and taken into custody. Searches at his kibblesworth home was one of four carried out that day with properties in Benwell, Westerhope and Slatyford also raided. Almost £20,000 in cash was seized along with 770 grams of amphetamine, a range of drug paraphernalia and anti-surveillance equipment including a scanning device found in Dixon's car. Hopewell, he was arrested at his home in Sheffield on the 23rd of July. So they were charged and appeared at Newcastle Crown Court so Dixon pleaded guilty to conspiracy to supply prohibited weapons, selling or transferring a prohibited weapon, conspiracy to supply spice and conspiracy to supply amphetamine. Hopewell, or admitted conspiracy to supply prohibited weapons, conspiracy to supply heroin, conspiracy to supply cocaine, conspiracy to supply spice, and conspiracy to supply ketamine. They were both jailed, so Dixon, who's 44 years old, was sentenced to 22 years in prison, and Hopewell, who's 40 from Sheffield, was jailed for 15 years and 5 months. Speaking, after the sentence, Detective Chief Inspector Mark Michaels from North Wimby Police said, Our investigation to Dixon and Hopewell uncovered an unprecedented involvement in the sale of illegal firearms and illicit drugs. It is only right that they are now commencing a significant term of imprisonment. Dixon was a prolific buyer of guns and drugs and we uncovered evidence he had access to lethal weapons such as a hand grenade, an AK-47 and even an Uzi submachine gun. Both him and Hopewell knew they were selling weapons to dangerous violent offenders who sought illegal firearms for the sole purpose of furthering their own interests within the serious and organised crime world and this type of activity cannot go unpunished. Not only this but they considered to sell highly addictive drugs and plan to sell spice an incredibly harmful substance to prison inmates for high prices. Thanks to the complex investigation which began with Operation Venetic, the international infiltration of encrypted devices, we were able to build a solid case documenting not just the criminals' exploits of Dixon and Hopewell but also their brazen and arrogant attitudes. Following years of criminal proceedings, our involvement is now over and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the officers and staff and partners who have helped achieve more than 37 years of jail time combined as a result for these two individuals. So guys, there's a couple of stories coming out the streets of the UK. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.